let's start where we left off with our Z-Sphere armature. So if we hit the A key, again, you can see that that's our preview of the mesh that we're gonna get. Right now you can see the density is set to two, that's fine. To actually create a subtool that has this uh, adaptive skin, all we have to do is click Make Adaptive Skin, and that will create a new subtool, which you can see here. So in this particular subtool, we haven't changed yet, so we still have the Z tools. So feel free to save that uh, as a separate file, and you'll always still have that. But let's go ahead and click over to our skin. And this subtool just contains our geometry, so that if we hit the A key, nothing happens because there are no Z spheres in here. All right, we've got two subdivision levels. If we look under geometry, we can see one and two. And this comes from that setting inside of the, the adaptive skin that we were able to set at level two when we created it. So now what I wanna do is create an overall shape for the mesh. So I wanna kind of bulk things up in certain areas, just reshape it, because right now it's very stiff. It doesn't look like we want it to look. And so what I'm gonna do is make sure that our symmetry is on and I'm gonna change our brush. So over here on the top left, and we're gonna use the move brush. So I'm just gonna hit the M key to narrow things down. And then just to get basic move, you could either click on this or you could hit the V key and that will give you move. I wanna make sure that our symmetry is on and it is. And now we can go in and start to manipulate these things. And so I'm gonna just stay here at level two. Let's get our draw size a little bit bigger. And so first thing I'll do is kind of come in and click on these traps and kind of bulk out the shoulders a little bit kind of pull out the chest and maybe pull in the waist here, or the abdomen, okay? And the, the move brush is great for just making these large overall changes. I'm gonna kind of pull this in. Let's get a little bit of a bigger draw size. Kind of get the, the shoulders a little bit more bulked up and as well as the back, kind of make that arch there. Kind of pull in the lower back, kind of add a little shape there. Now here on the rear, we'll kind of increase the volume for that same thing on the front of the legs we'll kind of pull this out i'm going to pull this chest out a little bit kind of pull the the legs out and add some bulk to those so we're, we're not doing any subdividing right now we're not doing any real sculpting we're just changing kind of the mesh shape of the mesh overall to get it closer to what we want all right another brush that we can use is inflate so we'll go into brushes hit I, and then if you look for inflate, you'll see that it's down here under N, so we can hit N. And what this will do is allow us to either uh, blow something up like a balloon or kind of suck it back in and shrink it down. And so let's say up on the arms that we want to increase the size of the arms. So we can use inflate, let's say on the forearms, and that kind of pushes the geometry out al along its normals. Okay, so then once we get down into the, the lower arm, then we can hold down Alt, and that's gonna do the reverse. So we'll make those where it goes down to the wrist, we'll reduce the volume there, make it a little bit skinnier. All right, we can do the same thing kind of up here, kind of bulk up the upper arm and shoulder, kind of the back of the arm, add a little bit of bulk back there. We can come up into the shoulder there. We can kind of push in from the geometry right around here. Maybe add some bulk to the chest. Let's kind of bring in the elbow a little bit so we add a little bit more shape to the arms. Let's do the same thing for the legs. So I'm just gonna hold down Alt and shrink down the legs as they get up into the ankle here. You can always also hold down Shift to smooth out the geometry. So you'll notice when that turns blue, that's me holding down Shift. And I'll kind of inflate this down into the toes. Okay, you can kind of inflate the, the ankle there and maybe even the, the knee up in the front, the quad area. We'll go ahead and inflate a little bit. So it's looking a little bit better. You can come down to the fingers and we're gonna be creating some claws. And so we can go ahead and kind of reverse inflate our fingers just so it's a little bit closer to what we want. You can also hit shift and just kind of tap to smooth things out a little bit. Let's go up to the head and we'll start to do a rough shape of the head. Let's go back to move. So another shortcut is to hit the B key to bring up your brushes and then the M key and then the V key. So B, M, V, we'll get you very quickly back to move. All right, so let's go maybe from the side view 
And I want to do kind of an owl shape. And so I want to have kind of a rounded head and then I'll bring a kind of a chin out. And right now we're not messing with any topology. That's going to come here in a little bit. You can see we're not changing the edge flow. All I'm doing is getting more of an overall uh, shape going, okay? But I'm not changing any edge flow. So there's definitely going to be a limit to what we're able to do with this. But I just want to get kind of the basic structure of it and kind of silhouette. So it's going to be something like that. Kind of pull this in a little bit that in I want it to kind of come to a point pull this uh, middle part out okay so something like that okay so we haven't subdivided anything uh, we've just been using the the move tool and the inflate brush to come in and start to add some shape to it okay let's go back and get inflate see a couple more areas that I want to just hit a little bit the back of the legs here. I want to bulk those out quite a bit and smooth them out. You can also, if you hold down shift, you can change your smooth intensity so you don't get as much of a smooth. So just kind of pull this out a little, add a little bit more back there. I want to push this in a little in the back. So this is a good place to, you know, work on the overall shapes that you've got here before you get into doing any sort of detail work. Let me turn off our polyframe and we can see that. You could also change your uh, matte cap. This is, we're using the red clay, uh, but another great one is the, uh, just the basic material. Uh, that's good because it can give you a, a little bit more of a look at your surface because it's a little bit more shiny. You can see down here on the leg, even though I've been using inflate, it's not really giving me the bulk that I want. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out that leg geometry a little bit. Let's hit that with some smooth, you want to go from different angles. If you start pulling out with move only from one angle, it can tend to flatten things off if you then look at it from another angle. And so you just want to make sure that you're good from every angle. All right. So what we want to do now, and, and to get ready for the next lesson, we want to turn this into a Dynamesh. What Dynamesh will do is enable us to sculpt whatever details we want and then recalculate the topology to match with those details. Right now, we could subdivide this and begin sculpting that way, but I don't really know exactly what I want to add. And so Dynamesh will allow us to add more intense parts that come off of the model in other ways and then recalculate that geometry. Remember, this is a sculpt, and so it doesn't matter necessarily the topology that we're using right now, only in terms of the optimal topology to be able to, to let us sculpt without wasting it in another area. So Dynamesh will let us do that. What I will do uh, is go ahead and I'm just going to subdivide this until it's kind of smooth. So something like this. So I'm up to level five. I'll go ahead and delete the lower. Let's come down to Dynamesh. I'm going to set our Dynamesh resolution to, let's go 512. We can change this later. And we'll go ahead and hit Dynamesh. So while that's on, all we're going to do is, and we'll start this in the next lesson, we're going to sculpt on this. And then we'll be able to recalculate the topology based on that so it'll match up with the detail that we're creating. So we've got sort of a blank canvas here set up with Dynamesh. And so we're ready to go for the next lesson. We'll begin sculpting the torso in the next lesson.